to unspoken this morning I want to deal with betrayal and and there are some wounds that we get over and and some wounds that we our soul is wounded and when your soul is wounded you can't get over it's hard to get over those kind of betrayals and so I want to look into the Word of God and we're going to look at David's life and and see that even though his soul was wounded the Lord was still able to deliver him. And so we have to remember that even though we're hurting and our soul is wounded, we must go to God because he's the only one that can ease the pain and, and bring you through that kind of hurt, that kind of betrayal. So let's look at Psalm 63. But first I want to give you an overview of what's happening of, of David's life. And so we start with, 1 Samuel chapter 26, verses 1 through 4. Now the Ziphites came to Saul at Gilba, saying, Is David not hiding in the hill of Helica, opposite Jesmond? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Verse 3. And, so, and Saul encamped in the hill of Helica, which is opposite Jesmond, by the road. But David stayed in the wilderness, oh Jesus, and he saw Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul had indeed come. So, so this is the basis for Psalm 63. So let's talk about David for a minute. David, even his family turned against him. So, his family was out looking for him, and they told Saul where he was. And I don't know if I said this, but he was running from Saul for 19 years. And so Psalm 63 is a picture of what David was going through. So, listen, he was stranded in the desert. He was attacked by thirst from within, which drained him of his energy. His thirst really was also spiritual because he longed for God. He longed to hear a word from God. And, and, and this thirst could only be quenched, oh Jesus, by the closeness of the Lord, by his relationship to the Lord. And so the sages say, those are, those are um, uh, uh, Hebraic rabbis, the sages say, that David longed to be in the house of, of the Lord and surrounded by men of God because the men who joined him, they were bitter, they were broken, and they had fled from their trouble. So sometimes, I knew shaky. Sometimes we better get in, in the midst of the people, of the, of, of the church people. We need a, 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 some, a circle around us. We need people of God around us to even make us feel better. And that anointing, when you get together, that anointing will pull you through. Hallelujah. So let's go on. Let's go on. David realized that his, sur his survival depended only on the inspiration that he was drawing from above. So now, let's look at Psalm 63, verses 1 through 2. He says, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Hallelujah. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. So, ah, uh, see the new Shia. He realizes now the futility of trusting in men. And now he said, listen, I don't have nobody but God and my sad shit. My soul is longing. My soul is thirsting. Even though my physical body is thirsting for water, my soul is thirsting for the living God. Hallelujah. So, he realizes that God is his sole support and protection. 
The land was barren. It was located, oh Jesus, it was located near the Dead Sea. So what happens is the the, the air was saturated with, with, with salt, which means that that increased David's, David's thirst. He was in the desert without food, but he was still longing for the divine presence. I knew Shia. So what we have to do, when we're going through, when we have that betrayal, when our soul has been wounded, we have to remember mm, that that my my coming out of this is not dependent on myself, but it's dependent on my relationship with God. Hallelujah. Listen, he is oblivious to everything else. And so he goes into prayer. Listen, this is what prayer does. Prayer lifts and it elevates. And then it exalts God. Prayer lifts you up. Listen, pray, and then when you are lifted uh, up into the presence of the Lord, then, then it, ele it elevates you. It elevates you into the presence of the Most High God. So prayer lifts, elevates where you can exalt the Most High God. Lord Jesus. Listen, verse 5 says, as with fat and abundance will my soul be satiated. The soul is sustained by prayer, just as the body is sustained by a meal. Hallelujah. So you can't you can't go through life without prayer. You can't go through life uh, playing at prayer. You really have to have a relationship with the Most High God so that, so that your prayer can go further than, than your, the ceiling of your bedroom. Hallelujah. Because some of us, we pray, we pray, it don't go nowhere. It just stays right in the room. But when you begin to live and walk according to the word of God, you are, ah, did it, Musha. you are elevated. You are lifted up into the presence of the Most High God. Listen, 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 verse 7. Because you have been my help, therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. Verse 8, my soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. So God, God is providing a refuge for David under the shadow of his wing. And we remember, we remember Psalms 91 says that, uh, Moses was under the shadow of, of the wing uh, of the wings of God. So, 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 listen. We have to get under that shadow. We have to understand. I know, Sha. I know that you're hurting. I know when you get when you are betrayed like that, that you go through something. But when we get under the shadow of God and we get into the presence of God, it's the only thing that can heal that hurt. It's the only thing that that makes it better. Arabakasha, you remember when you were a little a little child and and you went to your mother to, and you, something happened and you went to your mother to make the hurt better listen only god can make that kind of hurt better so if you if you have a soul wound jesus and, and that wound sometimes is still open you don't even realize it's a soul wound it's a tender spot in your heart it's a tender spot in your soul but we need that we need that to be healed over and the only person that's going to heal that is being in the presence of the Most High God. So listen, listen, um, the scripture says, you are my God early, early will I seek you. Uh, my soul thirsts for you. So David is thirsting not only uh, uh, for phys uh, physical water, but he's thirsting for the presence of God. And I'm, I don't know about you, but right now I need the presence of God like I've never needed it before. I need that presence to come over and overtake me and overshadow me because I need to be under the shadow of the Most High God. Ah, I need to live right now under that shadow. And so it's hard for me. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be real uh, 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 transparent. It's hard hard for me to get under that shadow, okay? It's hard. It's not that easy. But that, but that means that you have to have a made up mind, that you have to set aside time for the Lord. And if you set that uh, time aside, he will come. So I'm in the process of setting that time aside so that he can come. I expect him to come. I expect him to come and heal the hurt that's in my soul. I have an expectation that the God of my salvation is going to come and deliver me from all this pain. Hallelujah. Listen, I bless you in the name of the Lord. I love you. Subscribe to us. Like us. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.